Are you still there? Oy! A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Home Silver! Let's go, big fellow. I'm silver. When railroads began their expansion into the West, each community hoped to be included in the select list of towns that would be served by the Iron Horse. The town of Chickamaw was no exception. And word came that representatives of a railroad were to visit the town, everyone went wild. Enthusiasm blew the lid off not only the town, but the entire county. Chickamaw broke out in taunting and noise to give Jason Blodgett and his associate a rousing welcome. Things had been booming all day. When evening came, there were bombs and fireworks to proclaim a rally. Nearly everyone headed for the town hall. Pop Hannibal, however, was unmoved. He sat in front of his gunsmith's shop, watching the torch-lit crowd with a cynical expression. A uh, pack of fools. Idiots, that's what they are. Gibbering idiots. Squealing like a pack of blindfolded hogs in the south. Uh, what manner? Hmm? Oh, hello there, Injun. Well, it's good to see at least one critter that ain't bleating along in the mob like a, a lamb on the way to get shorn. Look at him. Jamming into the town hall to listen to Jason Blodgett. Uh, let me see him. Uh, what go on in Chickamaw? Blodgett and the slick-talking partner have come to make these jugheads think they're going to get a railroad. Oh, that's not true? I'm saying it ain't. Blodgett's like some of these newfangled fancy guns. All pretty engraving and hand-carving, but nothing more. For straight shooting ain't worth a dime. Ah, uh, well, me come here, get gun fixed. Oh, oh, well, leave it under my chair. I'll get to it in the morning. Ah, uh, Put it here. Uh, uh, what railroad come here? Well, Blodgett says he represents the Chickamaw Western Railway. Says it's a new line. Going to be built if he can get the backing of the people. What do you mean by that? He wants the town to vote to buy bonds to help finance the building of the railroad. Well, I'm again it. I say Jason Blodgett's got something up his sleeve. I... <clears throat> Better give me your name so as I can put it on the gun you're leaving for repairs. Um, me, Tonto. All right, Tonto. What's wrong with the smoke bowl? Well, it's like Blodgett, feller. Huh? It not shoot straight. 
Oh, 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 oh. Yes, I savvy. Uh, where are you going now? Well, me go hear what Blodgett say. Let me tell you what the railroad can do. It'll open up the country, draw manufacturers from the east, and serve as a magnet for trade. It will give your farmers profitable markets. It will add hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of taxable property to the wealth of your county. It will hasten the improvement of lands lying fallow and unused. And it will save you the ruinous expense of teaming all supplies into the district. And remember, friends, to ensure all these good things and to guard against such disasters I've mentioned, you and your fellow citizens need only vote to the Chickamauga and Western bonds to the value of $200,000. A small sum compared to what it'll bring you. How blind must be the man who will vote against it and therefore vote against the affluence both of himself and his neighbors. My friends, that is all. Well, I think that did it, Jay. <laughs> I reckon it did, Roger. <laughs> Two hundred thousand. Mm. That's a nice lot of money. <laughs> Ain't it, though? <laughs> and we'll be far away when these chicken move fools wake up. Sure glad we promised to buy them bonds. Jed, I still don't savvy how the railroad will be such a great thing for Chickamau. You don't? Shucks, everyone knows a railroad's a good thing for a town. People will settle here because it's easy to reach and easy to ship out cattle. Well, maybe that's it. On top of that, there'll be factories coming here. Lots of new people will move in and the town will grow. Ask Matilda Hannibal, she'll tell you. Yeah, there she is, coming from the meeting. Hi there, Mrs. Hannibal. Evening, Jens. Evening, Evening. Miss Hannibal. I see Pop sitting over there in front of his door. Weren't he at the meeting? No, he never goes to meetings. Sitting over there waiting to belittle Mr. Blodgett. He's the most belittling man I ever knew. (laughs) Well, I'd better be getting home now. Good night. Good night, night, Miss Hannibal. Good night. I know what he'll say. Say, Blodgett's just no good. Well, Matilda, I suppose you yipped along with the rest of the fools at the meeting. Tell me just one thing. What's that railroad to cost? It won't cost nothing at all. Hmm. Then why did Blodgett have to get you to vote for his railroad? We're well, going to, uh, to underwrite it. Uh, going to what? The bonds will go on sale tomorrow morning. So everyone will buy bonds, huh? Issued by Mr. Blodgett, I suppose? Of course. Hmm. Sheep being shorn. Hannibal, don't you talk so. There's nothing of the sort. Those skinflints, Blodgett and... and, uh, What's the other one's name? Dinsmore, but he's no skinflint. They peddle a pack of bonds and get the cash and vamoose. There's where you're wrong, Hannibal. They can't do any such thing. What's to stop them? Just to show you that they're on the level, here's how it's to be handled. We buy the bonds at the bank, and the bank holds all the cash... And doesn't pay one cent, not one single solitary cent, mind you, over to Blodgett. Until the first train runs through Chickamauga. Well, uh, you mean they're going to go ahead and build the choo-choo before they get the cash money? Yes. Hmm. Our railroad will run right up to the main line. People can change there and go all the way east. And people from the east can come to Chickamauga without taking the stage from the main line. Hmm, something crooked somewhere. During the next few days, the sale of bonds boomed in a manner that brought wide grins of satisfaction to the faces of Blodgett and Dinsmore. The sale also brought deeper lines of frowning to the face of Pop Hannibal. Hannibal! Hannibal, have you heard the news? Oh, these here days, there ain't no good news. Other kind don't care to hear. Oh, but this is good news. The bonds have all been subscribed. Until they go away, let me get on with oh, my work. Oh, but listen. The work on the railroad's been started. They're already working on the tracks. Uh, where at? There's men working at the edge of town and other men working a few miles east where the tracks join the bigger railroad. Mm. Go away, Matilda. Let me work. Still working on that same gun? Yep. What's the matter? Can't you fix it? Matilda, this gun was in doggone near perfect shape when that Indian brought it to me. 
And why are you fiddling with it? Because a man that owns a gun like this one won't take anything that's doggone near perfect. What? It's got to be 100% perfect. I'll go away. Let me test this site. You'll admit you were wrong when we get the railroad. I'll admit I was wrong when the railroad is running regular and you've got back the cash you spent for bonds plus interest on your money. (laughs) (laughs) Finest shooting iron I've ever seen. I guess I can put in a cartridge and test her. Uh, that by gun? Uh, what? Did that engine bring it to you? Mask. Say, what's this? Take it easy, Hannibal. If this is your gun... It I... is. Here's the mate to prove it. Gosh. I wouldn't have thought there could be two guns like this one. Finest I ever saw. Masked or not, mister, you must be all right. Did you get it adjusted? I think so. I was just about to put her in the clamp and make a test. Here, I'll put one of my own cartridges in it. I understand that uh, you don't think much of Blodgett and Dinsmore. I don't. They persuaded quite a few people to lend money to their railroad. Yes, and if that money ain't paid back, this will be the most dead broke town you ever saw. People have been mortgaging their land and everything else to buy them bonds. Yes, so I understand. Did anyone check back to see what Blodgett did before he came here? Uh, that's a habit that people around here never got into. There's too many of them that'd be embarrassed if their own past was inspected. That's generally the case. Say, see here, do you know anything about Blodgett? He may have reformed, but I doubt it. I, uh, say he's starting work on the railroad. Yes, he started laying tracks. Well, and maybe he's all right. Tracks are being laid right on top of the ground. But what's wrong with that? Ain't that where they're always put? Generally, the ground is level, packed down, and a good solid roadbed prepared. That's the biggest part of building a railroad. Oh, and these critters ain't doing that? Uh, where's your test target? Well, right over there against that planking. Give me the gun and I'll put it in the clamp. Oh, I can test it better this way. Jumping Jupiter, dead center. The gun's right. Oh, uh, how much do I owe you? You don't owe me a plug cent. Whenever I get the chance to handle a gun like that, I'm downright happy to do it for free. Uh... Say, where's that Indian that brought the gun here? Oh, uh, Tonto's working for the railroad. He is? Yes, he's at the construction camp. During the succeeding days, the track increased in length toward a juncture. Blodgett supervised the work near town. But one day, he rode to the other end of the job to meet Dinsmore. Whoa, whoa, whoa there. Hi there, Blodgett. Come inside the shack, Dinsmore. I want to talk to you. Sure thing. Is there anything wrong? Inside. Yeah. Sit down. Thanks. What's wrong? Jake, some talk around town, and I don't like it. What kind of talk? About this railroad. You been telling anyone what it would cost? Me? Of course not. I haven't been to town at all. I didn't think you had. What are they saying? People are wondering why we need $200,000. They're saying that the railroad shouldn't cost more than half that. That shows how little they know about costs. If they knew anything, they realized they were not spending a quarter of that. Well, no one's spoken to me directly. I've had no chance to deny them. Uh, they won't stand in the way of our getting uh, or getting our cash, will they? By no means. Our contract is ironclad and the cash is in the bank. On the first day the first train runs from the main line to Chickamoo, the bank hands the money over to us. And then what? Well, frankly, Jake, I, I doubt if these tracks will survive more than one trip. We'll have to make that first train a short one and a light one. And after that, well, we'll not be here. (laughs) That won't hurt my feelings. I'd be glad to get back to the big city where there's something going on. Jake. What's the matter? Is there an Indian working for you? Yes, why? I didn't hire any Indians. I hired him, Blodgin. We need a new cook here, and he came along, so I hired him. Why? He's been standing outside that open window listening to what we said. Oh, confounded redskin. Curious as all get out. I'll skin him. Hey, you, come here. I want to talk to you. Sneak away. Come back here. I'll let daylight through you. Sneak away. You're not stop. Confound you. I'll show you. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now, 
Now to continue our story. Tonto was seen as he overheard a conversation between Blodgett and Jake Dinsmore. He fled as Jake fired several shots in his direction. Confounded redskin. Look at him running away. We can hardly blame him, Jake. Why'd you rush out here waving a gun? He shouldn't have hung around outside the window. Oh, all Indians are curious. All right, boys, go on back to work. What if it hit the redskin? I was shooting over his head. Well, let's go back inside. We have a lot to discuss. Tonto maintained a steady pace away from the construction camp. He headed for a woods a few miles distance where the Lone Ranger was camped. The masked man knew by the way his Indian friend approached that Tonto brought news. Ho, ho, scum, ho, fella, ho. Ho, fella, ho. Anything uh, new, Tonto? Uh, uh, me here talk between two fella. Who? Two bosses. Dinsmore and Blodgett? That's right. Them plan to clear out as soon as first train crosses new tracks. So our suspicions have been confirmed. Ah. Uh. And Toto, we're faced with the usual problem. And what that? We know the truth about Cooks, but we can't prove it. Uh, people in town not believe truth? They've got to make those two men admit that they're Cooks. That's the only way that people will believe the truth. Well, how we do that? we we'll wait a few days. we we'll wait till the checks are finished. Then there'll be a big celebration when the first train arrives in town. Well, first train, also last train. When the celebration gets underway, we'll try a plan that I hope will get confessions from the crooks. Why wait for work to be finished? Because, Tonto, the celebration is to be part of our plan. The Lone Ranger and Tonto kept watch on the progress of the railroad. The people in town were impressed by the speed of progress. They didn't realize that the work went fast because of its temporary nature. They didn't know that the light rails and undersized ties would break down beneath a heavy load. Neither did they realize that the first frost would break up the roadbed. They knew only what they saw, and they saw the railroad nearing completion. You'll eat your words before you're through, Hannibal. You'll see that Mr. Blodgett is a fine man. Yeah, no one hopes it more than I do, Matilda. Sakes alive, you've put all of our savings into that doggone choo-choo. And we'll get them all back with interest. You wait and see. Hey, track smoke's done, ain't there? Oh, Hannibal, you should see the edge of town. Everyone is there making ready for the laying of the last rails tomorrow. It's going to be a celebration that'll shade Frontier Day and Fourth of July put together. Mm, Matilda, I uh, don't like to see you disappointed. What's that? Don't count on no railroad. Oh, there you go again, I Hannibal. mean it, honey. I ain't told you why I'm so sure we're up against skin flims. Well, but... suppose you do tell me. Do you remember the gun I was working on when the tracks were started? Remember it? How can I forget it? Talked about it night and day, even in your sleep. That gun... Well, the man that owned it wears a mask. I thought it was an Indian. Yeah, an Indian brought it in, but it belonged to a mask man. An outlaw? No, Matilda, he ain't an outlaw. Well, then what... Honey, that man is the Lone Ranger. The man we've heard about? Yes. And he thinks Blodgett and Dinsmore are crooks. Oh, oh Hannibal, you... you're sure? I'm sure of what he thinks because he told me. <laughs> then they must be crooks. Oh, Hannibal, what have I done? I've put... All our money into that scheme. May I help? There he is. The masked man. That's him, Matilda. That's the man I told you about. Hannibal, I want to talk to you. I was just telling my wife about you. Yes, I know. Oh, what can we do? Isn't there some way we can show those men up as crooks? Yes. You've got to praise Blodgett tomorrow when the first train comes over the tracks into town. You've got to lead everyone to where he is. But why? He'll be in his room at Mrs. Purdy's house. He won't be riding on that first train? No, he'll be in his room. I'll lead everyone there and see that everyone makes a lot of noise. Jake Dinsmore was busy packing his things so he'd lose no time in getting away when Blodgett joined him with the money the next day. He didn't hear the horses that hollered outside the shack in which he lived. He didn't know that anyone was near until he heard a rap on the door. Hello, Dinsmore. Mast. We want you. Is this a stick-up? Not exactly. Uh, what do you want? Your extra horse. What's going on here? Do you think Blodgett intends to collect that cash tomorrow and split with you? What do you mean? How do you know about that? <laughs> How do you suppose? 
Budget would like all that cash for himself. You mean he sent you to get me? Now, wait, listen. Come on, Dinmore. No, it's a double cross, that dirty schemer. Stop struggling. Let me go. Let me help me. Here, rope. Lace him tight, Otto. No, no, no. Come on, we've got a horse ready for you. Now, wait. Listen to me. Well? What are you going to do? My job is to make sure that you don't get one cent of the $200,000. Help me lift him to the horse. Tonight. No, don't kill me. Don't do that. You don't have to kill me, do you? He'll be all right, Tonto. Uh, you ride alongside. Make sure him not fall. All right, steady, big fellow. Get up, man. Uh, Get up, Stout. Please don't kill me. The following morning, dawn bright and clear. Crowds assembled early to mass at the edge of town to watch for the arrival of the train. It was a festive air and a holiday spirit. True to their promise, Pop Hannibal and his wife called for the people with whom Blodgett had been boarding. They'd no sooner left the house when a rear door opened and the masked man walked in. He went directly to the front room where Blodgett was dressing with meticulous care. Hello, Blodgett. What's that? Don't reach for a gun. It uh, wouldn't matter to Jake if I killed you. Well, what does this mean? I've got to put a rope on you. No, wait. Don't do this. Take it easy and you may not get hurt. Just a couple of turns of rope should hold you. Well, why are you doing this? You're out of circulation. Jake can collect that cash, can he? He sent you to do this? Why, that double crossing... I didn't say he'd sent me. Well, as if you needed to say any more. What are you going to do, murder me? Oh, I don't think that will be necessary. We'll just stay here until after the train arrives. I'll put you in the chair. You might as well be comfortable. It might be a long way. morning dragged slowly for both the masked man and his captive. Noon came and went. Then the afternoon was half gone when distant sobs of the crowd were heard faintly through the window. Sounds as if the train was arriving, doesn't it, Blodgett? Listen, mister. Well? Jake hired you to keep me tied up here, didn't he? I didn't say so. Well, there's no use denying it. I know that he double-crossed me. Someone has just reined up in back of the house. I didn't hear anyone. Someone's coming in. Oh, please, please put that gun away. I'm going to be sure you don't get away. If this is someone for you, I'll deal with them. Me come plenty fast. Hello, come in. What's the matter? There's plenty of excitement. Has the train come in? Train come in. But that's not reason for excitement. Everyone in town come this way. Come to get that fella. Well, why are they coming for me? Hello, did the rails break down under the train? Maybe that what wrong. Those people think they've been swindled. Where's Jake? Me not see him. Blodgett, you suppose he's taken the money and cleared out? Oh, you know as much as I do. He's a dirty double-crossing snake. He'd double-cross anyone, even you. Let me open that window. You see over yonder? Plenty big crowd. Coming here. That's right. Otto, I've seen a lot of lynch mobs. Lynch mobs? These people won't stand for being swindled. And fire guns. Yes. But do something. Do something to stop them. Get the sheriff. Get the marshal. Get help. Be quiet, Blodgett. Let me hear what they're shouting. Do you hear that? What? what are they saying? We want Blodgett. Well, they're coming to hang me. They'll kill me. Otto, give me your knife. Uh, here. Thanks. Blodgett, I'm going to cut your ropes. Uh, I can't let anyone face a lynching without a chance to defend himself. How can I defend myself? There you are. Take a look outside. What? Well, I haven't a chance against a mob like that. Everyone in town is there. What can I do? Where can I hide? You can't hide and you can't escape. Help me, I'll pay anything. Those people haven't heard your story yet. Shift the blame to your partner. That's your only hope. Hey, Where are you, Hurry, get to that window. That's it, Blodgett. Go and talk to the people. Now listen to me, everyone. Now wait, please listen to me. Hey, you've got to hear my side of it. You've got to listen to me before you lynch me. You can't blame me for that job. Jake Dinsmore is the one who insisted that we swindle you. He's the one not Otto, me. is Jake here? Uh, He's the one your me cash. bring him into the house. Right him outside door, tied. Oh, Gag. Yeah, come on. Give me a chance to help you get Jake Dinsmore. 
I'll help you get them and get back your money. I swear I will. Hey, he's admitting he swindled all of you. Now, what do you make of that? Yeah. It was Jack Dinsmore's idea in the first place. Please give me a chance. I'll get you dirty, scheming, lying, pole cats. Hey, there's Jack Dinsmore. Now, listen to me, everyone. Listen to me. Don't believe a word of this swindler's lies. I didn't take your money. Blodgett was going to take it. He's a swindler. You can talk to the people of San Jacinto and prove it. He swindled them. Now, wait, listen to me. Jake is a liar. They're coming for us. Don't hang me. Don't spring me up. Drag him out that window. No, no, don't lynch me. Don't hang me. We ain't going to hang you. We're going to throw you slickers in jail. Come on. Who can sweat it out in jail till we all get back our money? Will you, you won't lynch us? Oh, you won't be lynched, Roger. But by thunder, you'll have to square things around here before you get out. Well, I, I have money. I'll pay. I'll square everything. You sure will. Or you'll stay in jail from now on. Well, Hannibal, let me ask you one question. Fire away. Didn't anyone know that we planned to skip town with the money? Not a soul. And, and no one realized that the tracks were laid without a roadbed? That they'd break down under a heavy load or a heavy frost? These folks didn't know how a railroad should be made. They thought everything was fine when they saw the first train come in. They didn't even know that you'd borrowed a light work train instead of buying one as you were supposed to. Everyone wanted to shout your name and to cheer you, Blodgett. That's what that crowd went to your place for. You blame fool. Everything would have been all right if you hadn't started screaming that I was to blame for everything. Well, I, I thought it was a lynch mob. That masked man gave me the impression... That masked man sure saved this town a pile of cash. Uh, there's one man that I can't say a doggone thing against. have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.